guys, this is Lauren from Lauren Watkins Art, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint an American bison, also known as a buffalo, using two different types of watercolor. I'll be using Brescia watercolor uh, powder, and I will also be using Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus watercolor. Now you can see I've start, I started off by drawing my basic outline, and then the blue spots that you kind of saw that was masking fluid that I laid down and let dry before I started working. And I put it in areas that I wanted to preserve the highlights in. And then I've started adding the brusho. You can see me sprinkling it directly onto the paper and then activating it with my spray bottle. Um, I manipulate it um, after I spray it with a spray bottle with either my paintbrush or sometimes I will tip my board to help the paint run a little bit more. Now I'm drying it um, using my heat tool. That just helps speed up the process a little bit. And then I am adding more masking fluid. I'm adding more masking fluid because I want to preserve some of those bright yellow colors and I don't want to have to stress too much about other paint coming in on the area. So I'm just keeping um, the application of masking fluid kind of in the same direction I want. In the, I'm applying it in the direction I want it to go and to give dimension to the hair. Now after I let the masking fluid dry completely, I started adding more um, brush out to the paper. Now I am kind of cautiously spraying it here because I don't want the full face to be um, red at the moment. And so I apply it and I am really intentional intentional about the direction I spray it with the spray bottle and then I dry it again uh, between the next layers and I just keep this process going. I dry it so much because I want those colors to stay vibrant as long as possible and I don't want too much mixing at this point point. and so drying it helps prevent that. Now I'm also adding some more layers of masking fluid here and um, I use two different types of masking fluid today. I used um, my fine line masking fluid. That's the one that you saw with the fine point. That does really nice fine detailed lines. You can do little sections really easily. And then I also use my Windsor Newton masking fluid. And that one was really nice um, because I could do bigger sections. I could create bigger clumps of hair on the bison using that. It's important that when you are using masking fluid, that you let it dry completely between um, adding more water on it. You don't want to apply masking fluid to wet paper or paint over wet masking fluid. It can ruin your brush and it can ruin your picture if you do that. So just um, be very cautious. Now I'm just adding the base layers of my picture using masking fluid. Um, since or not masking fluid, brush show. Sorry, it's really early and I forgot how to talk. But I added, I'm just using brush show in the bottom most layers. I don't want to um, depend on it too much because it isn't as light fast as my, my hydrous watercolors. Um, so I just use it kind of as the base line as I work to kind of create these natural organic shapes of color and then I can I can play off of that um, with my hydrous watercolors. I also get around them not being as light fast as my other paints by, in addition to using my uh, light fast paints, I also will spray it um, with a, a varnish, um, and I will also that's a UV protectant. And I will also um, make sure that it's framed behind UV glass and not hung in direct sunlight. If I do a piece that's completely in a brush -o, oftentimes I won't sell the original. I will keep that um, in my portfolio. That way I don't have to worry about it getting ruined. But as you can see, I've been adding more layers. At this point, I am using my Hydrus watercolors and I'm just mixing it off screen um, because the bison was quite large in size and I couldn't fit it all in frame. 
So now I'm just starting to block in some basic shadows and details, trying to differentiate um, different areas as I work. And when you're doing a colorful picture like this, um, your shadow areas are lots of times a darker version or more saturated version of the color in that specific area. So I, I don't just make a gray color and use that for all of my shadows. I mix up a, a gray or a darker version of each color to go in the specific area that color's at. Later on, I will bounce different colors um, around to kind of help unify the picture. I'll put blues in the reds area, red area and red, and purples in the blue area and, and such. But when I'm first starting out and I want to keep it as vibrant as I can, I kind of keep those colors as isolated as possible. Now you can see me tipping the board. Um, tipping the board is is a great way to manipulate um, the color, the big areas of color that you have just laid down and kind of create some interesting blends with them. I'm just starting to add some more purples and just going through and adding just layers. I try to keep um, from, I try to avoid doing really dark layers at first. I like to build up gradually and um, work from there. I'm also looking at my reference photo to see um, where the values are. When you're doing uh, these colorful pictures, sometimes it can mess up your brain a little bit and you can get confused because you're working in totally different colors and so you can't compare as easily directly to the reference photo because a bison's just different colors of brown. It's light brown and black and reddish brown and so I'm working in very different colors than that and so what I do is I make my uh, reference photo black and white. That makes it a little bit easier to kind of gauge the value of what I'm doing um, and not get as focused on the color because you can make a picture look super super realistic that's black and white and then turn it to color and it's all purple. What's important is is your value when creating dimension and depth. And I know I say that in almost every video but really your value and contrast is more important than the color. Now I'm just coming in and just adding more layers as I go along. Um, I really like doing these watercolor animal pieces. They're some of my favorite to do. Um, and I think it's because I don't have to stress about it looking as realistic as painting someone's home. I can get really creative with this as I work. and. I can just relax a little bit and I find that just really freeing as I work. I'll turn on my favorite music and just enjoy the painting process. Um, one thing or tip that I recommend when, if you're going to be working like this is to make sure you have um, a really good paper that can handle a lot of water and a lot of um, just brushing over and and just kind of abuse because I I get this wet and I re-wet it so many times and then I will add more masking fluid on and then later on I will scrub it off and I just I just really use this paper to the most. So on this picture I'm using my arches. It's 140 pound um, paper and I I really like using this paper because it can withstand all that I throw at it. Um, you will see it kind of buckle a little bit on the side. That's because I'm not using the traditional method of stretching the paper. I've, I just tend to be a little impatient <laughs> and I struggle with doing that. And so if a picture gets really bumpy like this does because I added so much water to it, I will just take it off when I'm done, lay it face down on a clean towel, and lightly spray it with a little bit of water, and then I will take an iron, like uh, what you iron your clothes with, 
and I'll put a towel over the top of the paper and then iron iron it with a dry um, iron so there's no steam coming out and that will straighten out any bumps that I have and so I do that and then I don't have to worry about it um, getting bumpy at all but I've so you can see I've been adding just more layers going back through and this is all with the hydrous watercolors I'm not really touching the brush show at all at this point Now it's this point in the painting that I really had to start focusing on differentiating and separating the head from the rest of his body. In the picture, his body's kind of going one way and then his head's turned to look at us. And so it's kind of making it difficult to separate um, visually the head from the rest of the body. And, and especially since that area had similar color um, similar colors used so I had to really amp up the the contrast and I also tended to put the more cooler um, reds um, on the on the body portion to kind of help dif differentiate I used a little bit different of a red to help separate it and one way you can tell if you are going to get enough separation or you have enough contrast is to take a picture of the painting you're working on and then turn it to black and white and if your picture kind of blends in and and it looks kind of flat that means you need to amp up the contrast now here you can see I'm erasing the masking fluid that I applied um, I used a rubber cement pickup eraser to remove it. I just made sure that my paper was really dry before I tried to take off the masking fluid. Now removing the masking fluid is a signal we are on the home stretch of this painting. I typically don't remove the masking fluid until I'm about 90% done with it. Then I take it off and then I um, darken areas that I highlighted areas that I want to fall back visually and I preserve the ones I want to stay bright white. Um, I also in this picture left the masking fluid on the eyes um, in the catch light of the eyes so I wouldn't have to worry about those getting um, paint in them just yet. You also can't tell um, with the way the video is edited and stuff but um, at this point in the painting after a little, a few strokes and a few areas get worked on, I stop and take a, a step back to look at um, the contrast in the picture from a distance. That gives me a better idea of what areas need to be tweaked and what areas can stay the same. It's just really going slowly at this point because I don't want to um, mess up any areas that I I really like. So. Um, now I have taken the the masking fluid out of the eye and now I'm starting to bounce um, color from different parts of the picture all around so that there's more unity and harmony in the picture. I am adding blues for the to some of the shadows on the face. I've added reds to um, the shadowed areas in the bison just to kind of help tie it all together. Um, I just I just do it really cautiously because um, I don't want to take away from the bright colors on the bison. I'm also um, using my softer paint brushes at this time just to make sure no paint gets paint, um, picked up. The black paint brushes that I'm using are the black velvet um, silver brush paint brushes. And um, the ones with the blue handle are my mimic paint brushes. They're probably my my workhorse brushes between the mimics and the silver brush paint brushes. Now I'm going in with um, a really tiny, tiny paint brush, and I am adding some highlights um, using uh, my Dr. P. H. Martin's Bombay India ink, and just doing some final touches and adding my signature. 
And here is a close up of the buffalo in all of its colorful glory. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial as much as I did. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And also, if you want to see more of uh, what I create, hit the subscribe button and the notif notification bell next to it. Have a great day!